What's up, YouTube? Today we're gonna to be checking out the Creality CR10 3D printer, which is touted by many makers as the most bang for your buck 3D printer out there today. We're gonna to be doing a complete unboxing as well as a step-by-step -step guide on how to get it set up and make your first print, including how to set up your slicer program on your computer. All that and more coming up right now. Let's do it. How the heck do I get out of this thing? All right guys, so before we break this thing open, I'll just give you a quick rundown on what this is. It's the Creality CR10. This guy is only, I think I paid less than 300 bucks for this thing. And for all it does, it's a super bargain. Oh yeah, betcha, yeah. It's got a lot of cool features and it's big. I mean, the print bed is, is huge as you'll see when we get into it. And the print quality is phenomenal for the price. Again, as you'll see later in the video, we'll, we'll print some stuff out for you. So if you guys are just looking to get into 3D printing, you can't really go wrong with this guy. This is my first 3D printer ever. Um, so I'm no expert, but I did do a lot of research and uh, this is what I ended up with. I'm not really completely new to the maker game though. I do have a CNC router, which, um, you know, I've done quite a few projects on and love that thing. That's super cool. I, I'm tired of talking, so I, I'm just gonna unbox this thing. Let's do it. This is a little embarrassing. So obviously this box was already opened. We got it at Christmas. Here's the remnants of our tree and uh, we always have our annual Christmas Eve Nerf War. And this is um, some ammo that got lost in action. Mm, it smells like pine needles. Got some tape. Packing list, installation instructions, lead, screw, fixing, installation instructions, after sales service card. I always wondered how you said that in Chinese. Guarantee. Okay. Oh, we got a bunch of stuff in here now. Miscellaneous tools, USB cable, spatula. This is how you scrape off your 3D prints after they're done. High quality USB stick. Not sure what half this stuff is. Oh, nice size roll of filament. That's cool. Filament guide. Just looks like the main frame of the unit. So the first thing we're gonna do is take care of this wobbly bed. And it's wobbly because they don't do a good job assembling this in the factory. So we're just gonna flip it over. The reason it's wobbling is because these wheels are not tight. Um, all of them should move this entire bed like this just by spinning one wheel. And currently none of them do that. So we just need to tighten all of these. And we're gonna take our wrench here and just on one side, there's three nuts right here that uh, we're gonna tighten just slightly and that will line these up so that when we turn this, it'll move the bed like that. There we go. Now all six of them turn the bed when you rotate each one individually. And that's what we want. Doesn't have as much wobble, still has a little play, but apparently that's okay. All right, we're gonna check the tension on our wide axis belt. I think it's okay, actually. It feels about the same as my CNC router. You don't want it crazy tight, but it shouldn't be loose either. You can snap it and it has just a slight little tune that it's playing. And if you wanna get out your tuner, that should be a C flat major. So we got two holes here and here. And then we also have, these are through holes here and here on each side. We are gonna orient this. This is the front of the base. Our nozzle here is the front as well. Goes like this. Okay, it's in this bag here. These four guys here. We got lock washers for each one. Get one started. Those two are threaded okay. Now they're both threaded decently, so we'll tighten them up. 
And that'll do our final torque on both sides. Not too tight, just snug enough. All right, that's done. And now we're gonna mount this T-bracket on the motor side, so right here. This side, same thing. T-bracket goes right there. And we're gonna tighten all those down. So now our X-axis needs tightened up. As you can see, it's a little loosey-goosey there. So just like we did on the bottom plate, we're gonna tighten up that guy right there. Just snug it up and that'll tighten up this axis. Now we're gonna set these two set screws connecting the coupler to the Z lead screw. And we're gonna plug in all of these cables now and they're all labeled. He's gonna plug right there. That is for the extruder motor. The Y motor is right here in the back. And then Z is right down here. Next, we're gonna do the same for all the limiter switch plugs. And it's gonna be self-explanatory which one goes where because they're attached to the same larger cable. So this is super important. If you're in the US like me, make sure that this switch is set to 110 and not 220. Now we're gonna connect our two heater power cables to the back of our box here and here. And it's obvious which one goes where because there's a different number of pins. And make sure just to go finger tight because you don't want to break the connection on the inside of that box. Connect our power cord. All right, we got it fired up. Uh, first thing we're going to do is test the limit switches. So we're going to go into our menu system, go down to prepare, auto, home. Crap. That's not good. So in testing our limit switches, uh, we had a big fail on our Z axis. So you can see that kink right there in the middle of that limit switch. The switch was folded over and not operational. And uh, when it came down, tried to hit that switch, we had some serious stepper malfunctions going on. Might be a good idea to check all your switches to make sure they're not like that. They should be completely straight. Auto home, let's try it one more time. That's how it's supposed to work. Now we're going to test to make sure that the bed is heating up and the nozzle is heating up properly. Bed set to 60 and nozzle to 220. And the temps are right where they need to be. Now we're going to connect the tubing into the extruder. Next is to install the filament mount to the power box. We're going to use our two thumb screws. Now we're going to insert that into there and then tighten it on the other side with this. we got the roll here. Now we're going to start feeding the filament right in there. We just squeezed this and at the same time fed our filament through. Alright guys, so we got everything set up and we're ready to make our first print. And instead of printing the Decapacat, which um, if you've read anything about the CR-10, basically the test file of the cat that they load on everyone's micro SD cards automatically gets decapitated once you get just past the neck. So instead of wasting our time in that, we're going to go ahead and start printing um, upgrades for our CR-10. We're going to start with our dials underneath here to make these um, a lot easier to rotate. But before we can do this, we actually need to set up our slicer program on our computer. So we're going to switch over to the computer now. All right, so the slicer software that we're going to use is Cura. And um, did a little bit of research. You know, there's, there's other ones out there. Um, there's other free alternatives. There's obviously paid alternatives. Um, from what the quick amount of research that I've done seems to be that Cura is kind of the go-to. So we're going to start there and, you know, we'll see how we like it and we can always change, but that's what we're, we're doing now. So just make your way to, um, you can just Google Cura or go to ultimaker.com and you'll find this, but we're going to go ahead and download it. I'll be using it for personal projects. Okay. Fill in these details, areas of interest. DIY and hobby. I select your main 3D printer. CR10 is not on here. I'll just go other. Reality CR10. Why don't they have any good choices here? Okay, whatever. We'll just choose that. Country, United States. And we're downloading now. Next, three, next. Guess we'll just go with the default.
oh, okay, this is cool. So for the Creality CR10, it automatically gives recommended settings and, and setups. So that's cool. I'm definitely I'm printing in PLA. Is load a 3D model. This is what I'm going to print first. I actually don't have this downloaded yet, so we'll go ahead and download the file. Open, extract, extract there. There should be. We'll just start out with one, and if it works out good, we'll do another one. And the first time around, I'm, just, I'm not gonna change a thing. We're just gonna see what happens. Ready to save the file. 35 minutes. Well, that's cool. Gives you a cost breakdown. Right click, and we can drag this around and check it out. Save the file. So that was easy. All I, all I did was import the file, and it automatically created the G-code. So that is very cool. The first thing we need to do is actually heat up the bed to temperature, which is gonna be 60 degrees. So we'll go to control, down to temperature, bed, click, and then we'll pop that up to 60 degrees, enter, and then we'll go back up to control, main, info screen, and we'll wait for the bed to heat up to 60 degrees so we can proceed with the bed leveling procedure. Okay, it's finally up to temperature, 60 degrees. So now we're gonna go to prepare, and then we're gonna go to auto home. All right, now we're gonna go up to disable steppers. So now we can move everything around freely. We're gonna take our print head to all four corners and adjust our levelers. Um, you can see that uh, even though we haven't made them yet, they're here. I've actually traveled into the future to shoot this video. So I'm gonna use these dials that we haven't printed yet to raise and lower each of the four corners of the bed to the exact height so that there's the exact amount of space in between uh, the head and the bed. So the way we do that is with a sheet of paper. So we're gonna rotate our dials clockwise until we feel resistance. And as soon as we feel resistance on that paper, we're gonna stop. And then we're gonna slide it over to the next point and do the same thing clockwise until we feel resistance. And then we're gonna go to the next point and do the same thing. Once we've done all four corners, we're gonna do them again. As you can see, once you've done the other three, this one has changed. Kind of like tuning a guitar. Once you've tuned all the strings, you gotta tune them again, because tuning the other ones are gonna directly affect the first one. Wow, this one's really changed. Okay, once we've done it twice, I'm gonna go in the middle of the bed because this is where we print and this is the most important spot. As you can see, I can't even fit the paper in there. And the reason is because all CR10s, or just about all of them that, from what I read, come with a bed that is not level. It's not perfectly level. Even if all four corners are level, there's a rise in the center or a dip in the center. I'm pretty sure there's a way to fix this. I haven't done it yet. Um, when I do, I'll post a video. I'll link it right here. I'll link it right here so you guys can check that out. Um, but for now, all my prints are pretty small. They don't go any wider than this, and I've been successful with everything I've printed so far. Just compensating for the rise, uh, in my case, in the middle. You just have to lower all four corners until the paper fits. And I'm just making slight adjustments. Definitely not a perfect science by any means. Okay, now I'm gonna raise them a little until I feel the right resistance. I feel slight resistance, just barely, that's that's good. So so again, not perfect. If you're gonna print something that takes up the entire space of the bed, then you're gonna wanna fix this before you do so. Otherwise, um, you're probably not gonna have a successful print. Okay, everything is heated up. Go back up to main, print from SD, and I put it right in the top, so there it is. We're gonna click it, and here it goes. I went ahead and applied this tape that came um, see if that makes a difference. I know some people use hairspray and stuff, but we'll see if this helps that first layer adhere to the bed. It's um, laying down much better on the tape. I think the next one I'm gonna print, I'm gonna try hairspray, because a lot of people I know only use hairspray, so we'll see how that works, but. The tape is doing a fine job right now. I'm gonna go ahead and set up uh, my camera for a time lapse, 
to uh, record the rest of this thing for you. Alright guys, well I hope you all enjoy that unboxing and setup. One thing I didn't cover in the intro is that there is a Creality CR-10S, which is the upgraded version to the CR-10, which is what you saw in this video. There are a few key differences, like uh, I believe it has two motors on the Z-axis, and it has a function where um, if you have a power outage, it'll stop the print and you can resume where you left off. Um, and there was one other one. Uh, but if you Google it, you can find out exactly what the differences are. Uh, the reason I didn't go with that one is because the CR-10 is upgradable to the CR-10S. You can buy the parts separately and install them. And the price of doing so is super close to the cost of the CR-10S, at least the last time I looked. So um, I figured I would start with the CR-10 since this is my first one just to see how I like it and how much I use it. And if it's something that I want to upgrade to in the future, I can easily do so. Um, if I do that, I will post a video and I'll link it right here so you guys can check that out. If you don't see anything up here, then that means I, I haven't upgraded yet. And maybe I will, maybe I won't. I don't know. But if I do, it'll be there. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, the unboxing, and uh, how to set up your CR-10. I hope you guys enjoy it if you have purchased one. If you haven't, links will be below where you can. And if you like this video, please click that like button. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I encourage you to do so. I come out with um, lots of unboxings and reviews like this one, as well as DIYs, how to fix just about anything you can think of, cars, appliances, things like that. So if any of that interests you, click that subscribe button. I come out with content weekly. And um, if you have any questions about this video, go ahead and put those down below and I'll do my best to respond. And um, hey, I really appreciate you guys tuning in and uh, I hope to catch you on my next video. So until then. Hey, what's up guys? Uh, back at you with another boring, boring. How do I spice up my intros so people will stay and actually watch the whole thing? Hmm. Welcome YouTube viewers. Today I have before you the world's greatest 3D printer ever.